All right. So during the fearless action hours, we mastermind around being fearless. And this month, uh, the theme is build. So we can mastermind around building fearlessly or fearlessly building, however you want to phrase that. Or if someone has a question or a support need, they can bring that forward at this time as well. So I will put it to you. Does anyone have anything that they would like to discuss? No, I would ask the question, Foxy, um, when you are, when you started building your audience and, um, so how would you, um, how would you give, um, advice around, you know, being able to move into a space where you are, um, authentic and real and that's really what fearlessness is to me um showing up as i am and um knowing that that's good and well so where what would you say to anyone that is just starting out building their audience or their business um with the mindset of you know they have to be a certain way awesome so we started building with the podcast so eight years ago we started the podcast and we um, got the word out through normal social media networking type things. Um, and then we invited our favorite coaches on. Um, so when we were on, we were just us with our friends who also were coaches. And so it was easy. Plus, Terry and I doing it together you know, we already have kind of, we have, obviously we have a relationship. So we would kind of just go off each other. And at first we would, we would call each other after when we were like, how did it go? Did you like it? Did, did I talk too much? Did I not talk enough? You know, like we, we would need that encouragement that it went well. Um, and then after a while, we just got comfortable and, um, I'd say that that's how we show up now, regardless if you can see us or if you can't see us, um, we just show up as ourselves. And um, for me, uh, the more willing I am to be real and authentic, um, the, the more I'm willing to show up as myself, if that made sense. I kind of got distracted in my head by other thoughts. Um, but like, oh, the more fearless I get because um, the more willing I am to be seen, because that's my thing, the more willing I am to be seen, the more fearless I can be. So it's all really comes down to trust, trusting myself, that um, I can put the real me out there and that the right people will find me. And if you don't resonate with me, that is okay because you're not my right person. Um, and, uh, you know, we do the podcast really for us. Um, it's, it's our weekly connection to the work. And, um, you know, there could be two people listening or there could be, you know, a hundred people listening. We don't really know. I mean, we see the stats, but we don't really know because it's, it's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's on all these different places. And we don't, we don't see that. Right. So we just do it because it makes us feel good. And then it's bonus when we hear that some it's really helped someone or someone really loves it and stuff like that. So I think, it's showing up, but showing up for yourself, um, not showing up so that you'll get some kind of outcome, um, but showing up as yourself and allowing the right people to come. Does that help? Yes. I love that. Can you share the name of the podcast? Of mine? Yeah. Yes, please. It's Fearless Generations, um, but I can write in the- Awesome. So anyone that's watching this on YouTube can go check out the Fearless Generations podcast yeah. Fearless and Generations um, see the progress. Freedom. 
Yeah. Um, awesome. We're not, Thank you. we're not on YouTube though. Um, yeah. But we're on Spotify and iTunes. All right. Um, all right. So we are at the bottom of the first fearless action hour. And I have Rodney and Kitty here with me. So what do you guys, do you guys have anything that you want to discuss around being fearless? I can't nope. think of anything. Well, I think it's all the definition of what fearless means to you. So Beck and I were talking about this on another action hour and what is your definition of fearlessness compared to what my definition of fearlessness is? And for me, it comes down to willing. Are you willing to try something new? Are you willing to step out of your comfort zone? Are you willing to say yes? Are you willing to say no? Are you willing to, um, you know, walk into the unknown? Um, you know, whatever it may be, are you willing? Because I feel like if you are any level of willing, um, then you're being fearless. So Kitty, I want to hear from you. What is your definition of fearless? I haven't really thought about it. Um, <clears throat> I do, I guess stepping out of the box, like you said, is, is a big one and pushing yourself to overcome fear to do something. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that in my, I've done that in my career. Uh, the main thing I can think of is when I went to train, I was a medical assistant and I went to train for a facility for running patients on dialysis. That one was huge for me. It was very scary. Um, every test that we took, we lost people in the class. So, cause if you failed one test, you were out. And then I traveled like a traveling nurse does to different units around Arizona. Uh-huh. And I had to learn new machines as soon as I got in there. It's like, oh, and patients, patients I'd never seen before. I was so scared, but I, I pushed myself to do it because I was interested in the field and I, and I liked taking care of the patients. I said it was something I really wanted to do at the time. And I pushed myself and I can't tell you how sick I would get and stressed and not sleep because I was so scared. Yeah. Yeah. And that's awesome that you did it because you were passionate about it. And regardless of the fear, you still stayed committed. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't want you to get sick. No, um, it, it was just stress you know? from it. Yeah. <laughs> Your stomach gets in knots and you can't sleep. And it's like, oh my God, yeah. can I really do this. So, yeah. It would be nice to have, you know, some uh, tools to deal with that stress and that fear um, so that you are sleeping well still, but I love that, um, you went for it even with the fear. Um, and what do you, what did you find? What did you learn about yourself in that experience? That I can do anything if I put my mind to it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And that's what we find out when we face our fear. And you know, that there's you know. not really a need to be afraid, right? That you, you can do it. Right. And when I, get, when I get scared now of something, even in this business that I'm in now, I think, why do I get nervous about this stuff? Why do I get scared when if I, and if I come across something that I'm afraid to do, I think, well, if I can do dialysis, I can do this. I mean, it's, it's minor compared to learning that and making sure the patients are safe. And yeah. you don't kill them, you know, mixing up the yeah. black carb and setting their machine wrong, you know, it. So I remind myself that a lot when I get scared of something, it's like, no, I can do this because I know I can do it because I did this. Yeah. So, yeah, I love that. I love that you use it as evidence and you anchor it to other things that scare you. Yeah. yeah. Ronnie, what is your definition of fearless? A good question, uh, frankly. In my eyes, fearless basically um, the ability to do something you don't want to. True, very true. 
Um, if you can, if you can overcome the fear of doing it, I mean, it makes it that much easier, but it's not always the easiest. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling the fear and do it anyways. Right. Yeah. Hear yeah. that. Hear that. Yeah. Um, I think the, it's fearless to even think about doing something that scares us. And I think it's fearless to take a baby step towards something that scares us. And it's, it's every step along the way is fearless. Um, not just the one of completion, but every step along the way to get there is you being fearless. So, um, that's, that's what, um, what I think <laughs> I lost my train of thought, <laughs> but, <laughs> that happens. um, but yeah, I mean, if we can, if it comes back to willingness for me, you know, if we're willing to trust ourselves, if we're willing to, uh, step out of the box, like Kitty said, um, if we're willing to, um, do it anyways, um, even if we're scared, even if we're not motivated, even if we're uh, doubting ourselves, even if um, we're not sure if it's really the right thing to do, um, you know, if we do it, it's being fearless, right? Yep. So awesome. Um, so we still got two minutes. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? I can't think of anything. Yeah. Terry shared a quote this morning in her, in her courage action hour. And I forget the name of the guy, but um, the quote is there's nothing in the middle of the road except for a yellow, uh, a yellow line and a dead armadillo. <laughs> And I thought that that was so interesting because at first I was like, what, what, <laughs> like, how is that supposed to be inspirational or thought provoking? Um, and then the conversation like opened up and all of these ideas started coming out of everybody. And I was like, whoa, that's deep. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do you think of when you think of a yellow line down the middle of a road? Just a road. Yeah, but the, the yellow divider. line represents what? A divider. A divider, right? This is your side and this is my side. Stay in your lane. Okay. Right? Yeah. But when we're trying to step out and take risks, sometimes we go in <clears throat> the other lane. Sometimes to cross the road, we have to cross over that right. yellow line to get to the other side. Okay. Right? And so... And then the, the dead armadillo brought up thoughts of sometimes when we are stepping out, we're stepping into that die zone, right? Where we could get hurt or we could lose or we could not know what to do. And so that dead armadillo can kind of represent that, um, that fear of like, you know, if I do this, I could die, you know? Right. Um, because we see that that armadillo tried to cross the road and he got taken out, mm -mm. <laughs> right? So it ended up, it ended up being um, a really thought provoking um, discussion. That's so. funny when you start putting it like that. It, it you can think of more things, but first when you see it, yeah, again, what? Yeah, yeah. Hello, everybody. Foxy here at the top of the second hour of Fearless Generations. My two um, people dropped off. They're not coming into the second hour, so I'm here by myself. But I was thinking about what could I talk to you about? And I was thinking, following kind of what we were talking about in the last hour. Um, oh, my gosh, I just lost what I was going to talk to you about. <laughs> But um, I guess, you know, like, what does fearlessness mean to you? What does fearlessness mean to me? Do you know what it means to be fearless? So 
ask yourself that. What does it mean to you to be fearless? Um, does it mean that you have to be able to do something and not be scared? Is it that you're completely without fear? No, that's not what fearless is. That's unrealistic expectations that you have of yourself. If you're expecting yourself to be afraid of nothing, um, fear is actually something that we need. It's a survival, um, you know, function. I don't know the best word, but uh, are, we're supposed to have fear. It's supposed to be there. It's just that um, it stops us from doing things that we want to do that aren't going to kill us or hurt us or put us in danger physically, but they do it emotionally or spiritually or mentally possibly. And so our fear is like, Hey, nope, we ain't going there. Mm -mm, right. So I'm sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Um, so when we're scared, which is going to happen and our fear comes up, but we say, no, I know that this may not have gone the way I wanted it to last time, or I don't even know why you're coming up right now, but I'm going to be okay. And I'm going to do it anyways. That's being fearless to me. So, you know, being scared or being pissed off or being sad or being, um, depressed or, um, whatever it is and choosing to do something in freedom choosing to do something proactive, choosing to do something positive, choosing to do something that you are committed to, that, that will, no, mm -mm. sorry, mm -mm. that will get you to, um, I totally lost my train of thought, you guys. Mm -mm. But, oh, doing it anyways, staying committed and taking that action is fearless. Mm -mm, that's what I was getting at. Mm -mm. So when, when you're not in the place that you want to be, or things aren't going the way you want them to, or you're not feeling up to it today, but you made a commitment to yourself and you decide to keep it that's being fearless. Mm -mm. That's being fearless. So it doesn't take some huge action or some, you know, unrealistic expectation of yourself. It's you making commitment to yourself and you keeping it regardless of how you think or feel or you know, whatever it is in that moment, you made that commitment, you're going to keep it to yourself. Now, I'm not talking about something that you made a commitment about and now it doesn't serve you, but you're going to do it anyways because you made the commitment. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something um, that you committed to yourself in a good place. It still serves you. It still aligns with you. And yet you're just not feeling it today, but you keep committed because you're fearless. Mm -mm. So um, that was my jumbled bag of thoughts. Mm -mm. Sorry, I got distracted by the kid and then just distracted by myself. But I hope that that is useful information for you um, in helping you to define what fearless means to you. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Um, what is a fearless, if you can't think of you, what does a fearless person look like, you know, or who is someone that you see as fearless and why do you see them as fearless? And then, you know, if you, if you can talk to them, ask them questions, I bet you'll find that they may not see that fearlessness in themselves. You know, they might be surprised that you see them as fearless. So, um, realize that somebody else, you might be somebody else's version of fearless. And um, yeah, 
deep thoughts. So what does fearless mean to you? Define it for yourself. All right. Okay, Foxy here, we are at the bottom of the second fearless hour. And, oh, I was gonna grab it before I came on. I have this, sorry, it's kind of shiny. So the world needs who you <clears throat> were made to be. So um, when we, doubt ourselves or we think we have to be someone else or we have to show up this way or that way or we have to um change who we are in any way or um can't think of the right word but alter ourselves in any way that's not who our world needs our need our world needs who we are who we authentically are that's who our world needs and you know, comparing ourselves to someone else and what they're doing and how they got success, that's not necessarily going to translate into giving us success. Yes, having information, having tips and tricks, having strategies, having um, information from those who have gone before, all awesome. Yet, if it doesn't resonate with you, if it doesn't feel good in your heart, if it's not something that you're excited about doing, it's not for you. It's not for you. It's for them. It's for others, but it's not for you. And ways that you can still get help is continuing to look for someone who does resonate with you and what they're saying does resonate with you because there's so many people out there. There's so many people out there sharing basically the exact same thing. They're just doing it in uh, with a different voice. And that's when, that's how I knew that Rhonda Britton and Fearless Living was for me because she spoke with a voice or her, her voice what resonated with me. And the things that I learned, the way that she taught them, the way that she put the words together changed my life. And so she was the one for me. There's a lot of people out there doing what Rhonda does. And they're all basically saying the same thing, but they're saying it in the way that they're saying it. And that's what speaks to me. What I say about it is that her spirit spoke to my spirit and um, finding those people in your life that can speak to you um, where you are and inspire you to go further. Those are the people that you want to seek out. Just like what you're sharing, people who resonate with you are going to come and they're going to come seek you out, right? So if you're sharing something that's not authentic to you, then the people showing up aren't going to really be your people because they're coming to see someone else. And I think that was the biggest lesson I learned about wearing a mask is that people are going to come that are attracted to that mask and that those people might be you or you know resonate with you or not they may be the kind of people you want to be around or not because they're resonating with this mask this persona that you're playing and so by being willing and fearless to be yourself to show up as you, then you're attracting the people that you really do want to be with, that do align with you, that do um, love you for you, and that you can really be yourself around. And that's, you know, that's the reason why we want to be authentic, because then we have authentic friendships, and we have authentic businesses, and we have, um, you know, something that we can really share from our heart that we really love. And, and um, that we're passionate about and, um, you know, all those good things because it's coming authentically from ourselves and we're sharing it in a way that is authentic to ourselves. You know, if I felt like I had to sit here and be a certain way and do things a certain way, you know, it may not come across as me, right? I'm very animated. I use my hands. I make faces. I... I, um, 
lose my words, right? And if I was trying to keep myself and make myself only be seen a certain way, then I wouldn't probably even be on here. I, I would never be perfect enough to sit here and say the right thing and do the right thing. So I wouldn't even be here. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing anything. And so the people that I have supported in transforming their lives, they wouldn't have been able to have that transformation with me. And how sad would that be for me? Because most likely someone who's wanting transformation, they're going to find a voice out there that resonates with them. If, if I'm not speaking, if I'm not sharing, then my world goes without. Yet those who want to find truth will find truth. So just know though, that those who are seeking you need you to show up as you need you to be willing to show up however you're going to show up and need you to share what you got to share so that they can get it and they can, um, you know, do whatever that inspires in them. They can transform their lives. They can open a business. They can love their family better. They can love themselves better, right? Whatever it is that you're speaking to. They can feed their bodies better. They can move more, right? So your world needs you. Needs you. Nobody else, just you. And you are exactly who you need to be and where you need to be and know what you need to know to support the people in your world. All right, thanks. All right, Foxy here. We are at the top of the third fearless action hour and we got two beautiful ladies here. Foxy is not by herself. <laughs> so I'm super excited about that. So ladies, what would you like to discuss? And if you don't have anything, I've got something for you. Mm. Anything about being fearless? building fearlessly or fearlessly building because the theme this month is all about build. Mm -hmm. Anything? No. Yeah, anything. All right. So what we've been talking about the last couple hours um, is what does fearless mean to you? Because we all define words differently. It's not like we all take the dictionary and say, this is what fearless means to me. So um, I want us to define what fearless means to us. So Barb, we're going to start with you and hear your definition. All right. Um, well, I think on a very literal term, the first thing I think of is doing things without fear. Um, but um, I also believe being fearless is doing things anyway, even when you feel fear. So um, I know I get hung up on that sometimes where I'm waiting to not be afraid or I'm waiting for things to, you know, whatever, calm down or be fearless, but sometimes I need to do it anyway. So um, yeah. I, I think it's kind of a funny, I'm a very literal person. So and black and white. So fearless is like, well, yeah, I should have no fear, but I don't really think that's what it means to me. So. Yeah. To have no fear is kind of impossible. Right? Eight? Yeah. Yeah. And so I think we can definitely have less fear. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um, we can, you know, when we're doing something that we've done over and over and over again, we might have less fear and we might do it with a little bit more confidence, though. I don't know if the fear ever totally goes away. So, yeah. And I think we can get stuck in waiting mode. You know, I need to know more. I need to have this more perfect. I need to you know, know exactly what I'm going to say. I need this. I need that. I need that. 
and we don't act. And then we're, you know, kind of denying those people who um, are waiting for us to share what we have to share um, mm. because we're not sharing it, mm. you know? So thank you. Thank you, Barb. Terry, what is your definition of fearless? Well, it's, it's similar in, in ways that I kind of have this picture that, um, that I created that kind of helps me with, with this concept. And it's a, a picture of a road that you see no end to the road. And the road is lined by trees. And I'm walking down this road and I'm holding hands with fear. And so it's like, I, I am going to continue walking down that road, accepting fear, but not having it keep me from whatever lies at the end of that road. So that's kind of the picture that I created. I, it kind of just came to me uh, that we can make friends with fear, that fear actually has a place in our lives. And if we embrace it, but not let it control us, we can walk down the road, we can step into the unknown, we can take risks, and we can uh, have our journey take us to the end that we were meant to be at. So that's kind of the way I, 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 um, I've come to understand my relationship with fear. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Thank you so much. Are we all right? That's what I was trying to say. We are at 10 after. All right, we are at the bottom of the last fearless action hour for today. And I look at all these beautiful ladies I have with me. I'm so excited. So is there anything that anyone wants to bring to the table about being fearless? Any questions, comments, situation that you'd like assistance with? Anything like that? And it can have the added build theme to it or just in general? I am curious about some other opinions. All right. Um, I've had this come up a few times and I, I know my answer to this question, but how do you respond when Somebody, somebody expresses they are afraid of failing. Okay. Um, first, I'll go first, then I'll, I'll open it up. So first, I would say that that's natural and normal. Okay. Nobody wants to fail, right? That doesn't sound like a desirable thing. Right. So I would, um, I would validate their fear. Mm -hmm. and then I would ask them what the alternative is. So, uh, do they want to not do it at all? Or do they want to try it out with the possibility that it may not go the way they want it to? Hey, LT, LT is in the house. So, um, so that would be my first place to go. Um, anyone else? I'm going to open it up, uh, for your suggestions. Alana, I can tell you got something you want to say. Oh, you're busy. Terry, Barb. Well, I, I would agree that validating their fear and normalizing it mm -hmm. is really important because no one wants to fail. Um, but I, I kind of like, sometimes I like to do the pros and cons as well. So what if I do it? What if I don't do it? And then what's the benefit of doing it? You know, which is kind of like the pros, but what's the benefit? And um, sometimes, sometimes the, the truth is you don't want to do it. You don't know how to do it. And that's, uh, you can ask for support if you want to do it. So it kind of comes down to, is this something you really want to do? Are the, the benefits outweigh, you know, the, 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 the pros outweigh the cons? And if so, do I need to ask for support because I don't know how to do it? And that's why I'm really afraid of failing. 
and am I willing to ask for help? Yeah, I agree. Very good. Um, I will, I, I love everything you just said. I um, would add that I would ask the person to tell me more Be because often when people talk through the situation, they have insights about why they're afraid um, about, you know, about the situation, about the task, whatever it is they're doing that, and, and they realize maybe it isn't so bad after all, <laughs> like maybe they were really making more out of it than they thought. Um, or they, as they're telling more and talking it through, they figure out a solution, you know, whether it's more research or asking for help. So um, my go-to after validating is tell me more about the situation. Yeah, I love that. And even like I've had where I've talked with clients and they're like, I'm not sure about this. I, I'd really like some more clarity or, or confidence around this. And as we talk about it, they find that it's really something completely different that they're unsure about and um, that the thing they thought they were unsure about, they're really okay with. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's a benefit too of having them talk it out a little more. Alana, did you want to say something? We have one magic mitten left. Mm -hmm. No, you guys covered it. It's all good. It's all, all right. good. And sometimes it's also making it so much bigger that it's like, is that true? Or are you making that up? Like, does that, re is that really true? Is that story going on? Do you want to keep telling you that story or do you want to try something different? Yeah. Awesome. See, that was a magic 10 magic seconds. Minute. There you go. Yeah. We needed that magic minute for Alana to share. Um, so Stephanie, does that support you? Does that help you? It does. You know, I, I have a lot of people, especially when, when we sit down in conversation for the first time, that one of that biggest fear, especially in, in starting something new around their body is I, I don't want to fail. And in my, my question on back is always, well, what, what does it mean to fail? And you know, I, we, we talk a little bit about the difference between being a failure and failing and, it, and talking about, you know, it's, it's not failing to come back and let's look at things a different way. Let's try different things. And, you know, I, I really have the conversation in, you're not going to offend me if you say, this isn't working, let's try something else. This doesn't feel right. This isn't working, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, it, you're, you're not hurting my feelings. This is about you. And so, you know, let's, let's have a two-way conversation and, so it's, it's not about failing. It's about what is it that's helping you get to where you want to be? What's helping you feel how you want to feel? There's no failing about it. Yeah. And like, it, 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 you almost see the light bulb go on and it's like, oh, like you, you just take the word fail out of it. Yeah. And then it becomes, you can't make an excuse when you can't fail. Yeah. So true. LT put some stuff in the chat too. So check that out. Um, and when you were talking, the thought that came to mind was expectations, you know, really checking what their expectations are of themselves. Um, so, oh, did someone say they're leaving? Oh, Alana. Bye, Alana. I love that you came. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm going to stop this.